All right, welcome grade 12 to the last art of business cycles. This video is on the demand and supply side policies and also on the Phillips curve. So let's start with the demand side policies. The demand side policies are policies involving, if you look on the right, the expansionary fiscal or monetary policy. So it could either be an expansionary fiscal policy or an expansionary monetary policy. There's a video on that uh, if you don't understand those policies. So please go watch that video. So if you want to use the demand side policies, you must use one of those uh, to increase demand. And the demand will increase, as you can see, from AD1 to AD2. Uh, if the demand increases to AD2, now we've got a new output. We've got a new... GDP output. We've got more GDP after that increase because the GDP has increased from Y1 to Y2. This is good. All right? We want more GDP because it means more goods are being produced in the country. The economy is doing well. But unfortunately, if we only use the demand side policy, you see we have a new output, but we also get a new price, PL2. So the price goes up from PL1 to PL2, and this is not good. That's inflation, we don't want inflation. So this is where the supply side policies come in. All right, if you go to the next page, supply and demand side policies together. So we know that if we apply the demand side policies, we saw on the new slide that we're gonna get a new output, Y2. So GDP will increase, which is good. But unfortunately, the price will also increase to PL2. Uh, that, that's not good. All right, so in order to address this uh, issue, the price increase, the inflation, we can apply the supply side policies. Because what the supply side policies, this is the whole new economic paradigm. The new economic paradigm says that we want economic growth, but we don't want inflation. We don't want the price to go up. So what we can do, in addition to the demand side policy, which is already applied on the graph, we can also apply the supply side policy uh, on this graph. Now, the supply side policies means now we increase the supply. How can we increase the supply? There are two ways. Uh, improving productivity. Productivity means that employers are producing more using the same resources or the business can reduce costs. If we apply these supply side policies, the supply curve will shift to the right. So AS1 will shift to the right. It will shift to, uh, let's say, AS2. All right. So demand side policies will increase the demand curve, will shift it to the right. But the supply side policies will increase the supply by shifting it to the right. Now look what happens. We now have a new output. It's an even higher output. Let's call this Y3. So the GDP increases further when we apply the supply side policies to Y3. So we've got an even higher GDP. This is good. But look at what happened. Now the price is, is a return back to PL1. So the price has gone back to PL1. So by applying the supply side policies, we can get a higher GDP without inflation. That's the new economic paradigm and we've seen it on the graph. When you can get a higher output, but the price stays the same. Uh, and you can do that by applying the demand side policies with the supply side policies. Let's go now to the last part of the video, the Phillips curve. All right, so the Phillips curve shows the relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. So we've got the unemployment rate in the x-axis and we've got the inflation rate in the y-axis. So what is this relationship? So let's take for example this point, point A. At point A the unemployment rate is 5% but the inflation is fairly low at 2%. Now if you want to move along this uh, Phillips curve, let's say you want to move to point B. What's going to happen at point B? At point B, you will have a lower unemployment rate, 3%, which is good, right? It means that the unemployment rate is low, more people have work, but it comes at a high inflation rate. 
six percent so by reducing the unemployment rate you've actually increased the inflation rate so this means that it's actually pointless to move along the phillips curve because when you change the one the other one becomes worse so what is the solution the solution is to then change the natural rate of unemployment if you can change the natural rate of unemployment you can reduce inflation without uh, i mean you can reduce unemployment without impacting on the inflation what is the natural rate of unemployment it's this rate here where the inflation is zero the rate of unemployment that is not influenced by inflation so on the current Phillips curve, the natural uh, rate of unemployment is at 6%. When the inflation rate is zero, we've got 6% unemployment. So by applying the su su uh, supply side measures again, we can shift this Phillips curve. And this is the only solution because if you move up and down the Phillips curve, uh, it doesn't help. You improve one, uh, you improve in unemployment, but you become worse off in terms of inflation. So the solution is to shift the Phillips curve to get a new, just try to get that, to get a new Phillips curve. Let's say this is the new Phillips curve. Let's call it Phillips curve two. Now, this is good because now we have changed the natural rate of unemployment from 6% to 5%. So we have now changed uh, reduced unemployment without changing inflation and this is the best outcome so the best outcome always is to shift the Phillips curve to the left uh, otherwise if you move up and down the Phillips curve unemployment becomes less but the inflation becomes high so we want to shift this Phillips curve to the left so that we can get a new natural rate of unemployment I hope this video was useful thank you great folks